I felt there was an interesting subtext to the couture collections this season in that... Versailles. Versailles. And this idea of history being reinvented yes. or history exactly. being the material to create something forward thinking. I found it very odd over the last three collections that I feel like what Carl has been doing at Chanel and what Raph has been doing at Dior has been very much in sync. They're not doing the same thing, but it's, it's this know, movement. they both had uh, trainers, sneakers at the same time. Yes. And also the last ready to wear when Chanel was about supermarket and Dior was about the street. It was about this kind of, this reality of real women really living in real clothes, mm -hmm. which kind of permeated both collections in incredibly different ways. And I think that's kind of why it, it sort of demonstrates to me why they're both such great designers that they can tackle the same theme completely randomly, which is obviously reflecting some kind of change in culture. the wider sphere of yeah. culture. That's the importance of fashion, that it does reflect that. Exactly. It, and it's kind of a testament to their time, but that it's interpreted in these two very different ways. For me, with this Dior collection, I kept thinking of that Cecil Beaton quote, that Dior was the, the fateau of dressmaking. And that's what this is. The it, fat O. Fato, what O? Oh, fato. fat -o. I was thinking See? fat o. Fat -o. <laughs> um, what o. What o. Okay. Of, you know, so, and I guess that is about a certain lyricism and a certain historicism, um, and obviously about the 18th century, mm -hmm. which really is where Haute Couture started. I mean, Worth was 1858, but what Marie Antoinette did with Rose Bertin was really this idea of a dictator of fashion, of somebody telling you what to wear. And that came from Marie Antoinette herself, who said she wanted to be the most fashionable woman in the world. But this idea of fashion being created and then dispensed. But weren't all powerful women a bit like that? You could have... But I think as well with Rose Bertin, just the idea of there being a place where you saw her in the dress and then you could go and buy it too. I see. And that Marie Antoinette gave her... We had the Duchess of Devonshire doing the same thing. True. And there's, but there's a very wonderful Marie Antoinette book, which I, I get all my facts from. Queen of Fashion, <laughs> what Marie Antoinette wore to the revolution. And um, basically there was an agreement that Rose Bertin could sell the same dress to another woman as long as it was two weeks after the Queen had first worn it. That's fabulous. Which is great. And for me, that's really the birth of of haute couture and obviously that also comes out of Louis XIV and this idea of incorporating who's allowed to make what clothing for who, this idea of regimenting fashion and of fashion being something that's powerful and something that he <coughs> wanted to control as the king. But yeah, we define the power of, for example, France. Yes, exactly. Because it was about outward appearance mm -hmm. and, you know, like the red heels or whatever yes. it, you know each you know, the french had it very ritualized mm. and therefore they are in many senses still today the fashion capital of the world i think there's still also that odd idea of the regimentation of versailles continues in the fashion world today the idea of where you see where you sit how you sit what you sit on that being a measure of your power and importance who you clap when you clap, whether you don't clap, when other people are clapping. Whether you're in the front or whether you're in the back. Exactly. This, all this, it's these very odd nuances of power which have been flushed out of a lot of things. But it's very much that Versailles thing of odd measures of power in unexpected places. And I think as well there is that still in fashion. And in a sense that's kind of oh couture. A lot of people don't really understand the importance of it and the significance of it and why it costs so much more than ready to wear. But it, it harks back and for me, the great thing about haute couture today is that it is that link. It's a link to the way things used to be done. Well, you have not only the petit main very close backstage mm. in tears watching their pieces go out, but also you have what they call the fournisseur. You have all the embroiderers in their sitting in rows mm. there. And so it's a bit like how the courtiers were invited into the bedroom for the royal birth. Mm. It is a very powerful a demonstration of power, its display and its apotheosis there as a couture show and it's very regimented in its public way. I've mm. never thought about it like that. It's I wonder as well if it's a bit sort of 
tricky chooses at the guillotine. I sometimes wonder if that's what it's a bit like with at well, a fashion the show. Are. Yeah. <laughs> But actually, I but think... But Versailles, Marie Antoinette, Dior. Yes. And it's all part of that collection. tradition, but also the, the, the fact of making it modern and light and still having that impact, but it feeling contemporary. I think being able to create something modern using the past is a really extraordinary thing. Yeah, I mean, when you think every note musically has been played and yet new music creates something it, it, that you've never heard before and yet you recognize it it has a resonance because you can the note is itself identifiable as music mm. that's really the parallel with actually what we're doing on the shoot i hope 